All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores coming with the Rico Report. Several things to talk about today. First of all, David DeCastro got released by the Steelers today. Should we go get him? Also, the NFL has approved alternate helmets today. Should we bring back some throwbacks? Also, something interesting Ron Rivera said about Ryan Fitzpatrick recently. And then we're going to end it with a lot of very random, crazy stats that I didn't even know about. And I'm sure at least a few of these you didn't know as well. But before we get into all of that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Also, make sure you go check out the rest of the channel. All of my videos are organized in playlists. I even have a comedy playlist for all of my funny videos. So again, go check out the rest of the channel. Hit the bell next to the subscription button. Without further ado, man, let's get it. All right, so first of all, the Steelers today, who knows why, released David DeCastro, a six-time Pro Bowl, three-time All-Pro guard. And he's only 31 years old. It's not even like he's up there in age, like mid-30s, late-30s. And he was a great locker room presence as well, like a big leader. And now the Steelers are only going to have one returning starter from last year. So I don't exactly know what they're doing. They're thinking about going to get Trey Turner to replace David DeCastro, but that's a pretty big drop off. Again, David DeCastro is a three time all pro, six time pro bowler, and he's only 31. And I'm looking at his contract situation as he may have been a post June 1st cut because his cap hit this season was $14.297 million. He was taking up 7.7% .7 of the Steelers cap alone. And now since they cut him, post june 1st they only have to take on 5.547 million dollars worth of dead cap this season and they save 8.75 million dollars worth of cap space again for this season specifically so i guess the plan is to save money but i don't think this is one of those examples where saving money is worth it if you have the better guy you keep the better guy in my opinion i mean also since this was the last year in this deal he may be looking for a nice big time long-term contract and maybe they wanted to escape that as well as long as save money for the 2021 nfl season but it's pretty widely known and agreed upon that david DeCastro is a top five guard in the nfl so losing one of those is wild to me i mean this guy didn't allow a single quarterback takedown through both 2017 and 2018 so again it's crazy that they only have one returning starter from their last year's offensive line it's crazy but most importantly as far as this video goes should the burgundy and gold take a look at them because right now you have Eric Flowers or Wes Schweitzer starting at left guard. And I'm comfortable with either one starting because Eric Flowers was the best thing on our offensive line that last year before he left. Because Trent Williams was holding out. Brandon Sheriff was hurt. He was literally our best offensive lineman before he went to the Dolphins. Wes Schweitzer held it down at left guard. Huge surprise. Actually a pretty good, pretty stable, nice starting level guard. And either one of them as a backup is great depth. That's excellent depth. And then, of course, you have Brandon Sheriff on the other side, but is Brandon Sheriff your long-term option? Then you also have Sadiq Charles, who can play either guard spot, either tackle spot. And even though he's been healthy so far this offseason, he couldn't catch a break last season. So Sadiq Charles should never stop you from getting to David DeCastro. And I guess really the answer is how much money is he asking for? With him still getting paid from the Steelers even after they released him, I'm assuming he can't be asking for too much money right now, but I think more than likely he is looking for a long-term deal. Are Ron Rivera and company willing to give him that much money? Because one thing he does have over Brandon Sheriff is availability. In 2013, he started 15 out of 16 games. From 2014 all the way through 2016, he never missed a game. 2017, he only missed one game. 2018, he missed two. 2019 he didn't miss a single game and then 2020 he missed three since 2013 he's only missed seven games brandon sheriff has been in the league for a couple of years less than him and has already missed more than seven games he missed two in 2017 eight in 2018 five in 2019 and three last year that's 18 again 
Brandon Sheriff has been in the league for a couple of years less than David DeCastro and has missed 18 games to David DeCastro's seven. So should we look into David DeCastro, try to sign him now for something cheap, try to figure out a long-term extension over signing Brandon Sheriff long-term? Because again, I mean, that's been a lot of people's problems with Brandon Sheriff. I've heard a lot of people say that they'd be willing to pay Brandon Sheriff long-term if it weren't for the injury problems. If he wasn't so injury prone, David DeCastro is not injury prone. So would you be willing to pay David de castro the money that you would normally be willing to pay a brandon share again three-time all pro six-time pro bowler since he finally took on a full-time starting role in 2013 and he didn't make his first pro bowl until 2015 and he's made the pro bowl every year since just something to think about don't be surprised we end up with him. I'm not betting money on it. I don't think it's very likely, but do not be surprised if Ron Rivera and company didn't hear the news that David DeCastro got released and immediately hit him up and started talking money. Like, what do you want? Next up, the NFL approved alternate helmets today for teams wearing throwback uniforms starting in 2022. So it will not take effect this season but as of 2022 and beyond you can now wear alternate helmets because remember we could wear alternate jerseys but we couldn't wear alternate helmets with them now you can go full-blown throwback if you want to you have these jerseys during the jason campbell santana moss days with the yellow red and white pretty clean too i'm assuming you would probably have to switch the r out for a w and take away the feathers but that's a pretty nice look for a little throwback. Or the Daryl Green era with the deep burgundy. I, lo I love this shade of burgundy. This is my favorite shade of burgundy right here. And again, instead of the spear, maybe you switch it with the W. And then you also even have the brown helmets with the deeper burgundy with some brownish, goldish lettering for the numbers. Maybe able to bring this one back as well. And I mean, I guess you just have to get rid of the logo on the shoulder probably replace it with a w you may even put a w on that brown helmet but i feel like they would just keep it that authentic straight up leather looking thing to recapture how it looked way back before we had like the real helmets the modern helmets that we have now so that's interesting to keep track of we'll see maybe ron Rivera and company jason wright maybe since he's the president maybe he has some say on it it'd be interesting to see if we end up bringing back some throwbacks in the year 2022 and how they would adjust it to abide by the change of the name from redskins to the washington football team or whatever it may end up being by the time 2022 comes because we may not even be the washington football team by the time 2022 comes so we'll see next up ron rivera said that there's no reason why ryan fitzpatrick can't be the guy for a while and this is not like for a while this season this is like long term over the course of over a year. And that's really interesting. I mean, Ryan Fitzpatrick is 38 years old. And basically, Ron Rivera was saying if Tom Brady can do it, why wouldn't Ryan Fitzpatrick be able to do it? Which, you know, may be a fallacy in some way. But I kind of see his point. I don't necessarily agree. And I really hope Taylor Heineke is able to step up and take over the starting QB spot. If not, maybe we trade for like a Watson, Wilson, maybe even a Rodgers for like a three to five year thing. Or we get our franchise quarterback in the draft. But I just don't see it being Ryan Fitzpatrick. I personally wouldn't put any chips or any stock into that. But, I mean, it's interesting for Ron Rivera to be so high on his current QB1 right now. I mean, you never know. He's literally coming off of his best season of his career last year. So the momentum and the trajectory is all pointing up. I mean, the team that he has around him right now with the Washington football team is easily the best team he's ever had around him throughout his entire career. And I'm not talking about specifically this is the best receiving group he's ever had. This is the best offensive line he's ever had. But as just a total team, including the defense, that's going to get him the ball back quickly and consistently this is easily the best team he's ever played for so the sky is kind of the limit for him right now we'll see i'm not betting money on him being successful not only long term but even just this year alone but who knows and lastly i want to take a look at some crazy stats and charts like first of all ryan fitzpatrick's qb chart brought to you by next gen stats from last year when he played for the dolphins it's kind of crazy but you see those deep balls and the short range things he's pretty straight he's good but I don't know what it is about that intermediate range in the middle and to the right, it gets ugly. And that tends to be where a lot of quarterbacks struggle anyway, just off of trying to throw it into the middle of the field is very difficult. It takes a lot more intelligence and IQ and awareness and processing skills. Whereas hitting the outsides is more so like your natural talent and your accuracy and your ball placement, a lot of physical things. Whereas that middle of the field is mostly mental. So 
I like the fact that he's good short range, middle, and deep range, but that intermediate, we're going to have to fix that this season if he's going to end up being the starter for this year, if he's going to end up being QB1 for real. But overall, I mean, the charting isn't bad. He's above the league average in all of his yellow spots where he's at basically average at amongst the league. He's above the league average in both of them over the line of scrimmage, deep and short to the left. He's way above average short range middle and right medium range left and deep middle and right and then he's also excellent as far as throwing screens to the right side so i mean i guess scott turner needs to note that that ryan fitzpatrick is better at throwing screens to the right than to the left and do with this information as you will but i mean to me this is just very interesting also ryan fitzpatrick is the only quarterback in nfl history to throw four plus touchdowns in a game for five different teams about to do it for a sixth one as well to extend that record make it even more out of reach for another quarterback to do it speaking of quarterbacks i'm not sure if y'all know but going into year three if ryan fitzpatrick is truly the start of week one terry mclaurin would have had seven quarterbacks in this short two years and one game career technically his third year but this is week one of his third year the very beginning of it he would have gotten passes thrown to him by seven different quarterbacks now just imagine what Terry McLaurin is going to be able to do once he finally has stability at the quarterback position and now he finally has other threats around him to distract defenses so you can't double team Terry all game like they've been doing against them the past two years so I just thought that was very interesting to think about as well. Also look at target EPA allowed amongst linebackers from last year Cole Holcomb was third so I mean you could argue Cole Holcomb is one of those top coverage linebackers it doesn't necessarily look like it on tape to me either but according to advanced statistics Cole Holcomb is right there also Jimmy Moreland as well for slot coverage success rate and all of these stats are also brought to you by next gen stats from last season he had to play slot a minimum of 50% of his snaps, and he had to receive at least 50 targets. He was third in the NFL in slot coverage success rate, which is really interesting. That, that's something to keep track of. This is going to be a very competitive secondary in training camp, man. I'm telling you, because Jimmy Moreland is not one of the safest players on this team right now for making that 53-man roster. Also, something really interesting, looking at the most slash least improved third down offenses going from 2019 to 2020, we were the second most improved only behind the Packers. The Packers improved 13%. We improved 11% going from one of the worst to one of the best kind of in the middle last year. And I'm thinking that we're going to take another step forward going from the worst QB situation in the NFL last year to at least average. If, if Ryan Fitzpatrick and or Taylor Heineke are at least in the middle, like just somewhere in the early 20s, late teens, we're going to go up even more in third down offense percentage because we had the worst QB situation last year in the entire NFL. It's not even a debate. And Scott Turner was still able to do the second best improvement going from 2019 to 2020. So shouts out to Scott Turner for that. He definitely deserves the bulk of the credit, the majority of it. I also like seeing that the Eagles and the Cowboys were two of the worst. Now, granted, the Cowboys, Dak Prescott hurt and offensive line also the eagles offensive line carson went struggling jalen hurts had to come in at the end but you know it's still nice to see the cowboys and the eagles some division rivals at the very bottom while us and the packers are at the top also antonio gibson was held to zero or fewer yards on just 3.8 percent of his rush attempts in 2020 first in the nfl first like the best out of every running back my boy nick chubb dalvin cook Derrick Henry we're not talking about an amount we're talking about a percentage Antonio Gibson was the best I mean the sky's the limit here man I'm telling y'all I think I'm telling you that Christian McCaffrey 2.0 but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section and let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video especially the David DeCastro part Ryan Fitzpatrick as a long-term quarterback possibility and also do you want the burgundy and gold to bring back some of those throwbacks are there any other throwbacks other than the three that I showed that you may be interested in us bringing back? And also all of the stats I discussed as well. Also, please like this video if you liked it, if you learned anything. I know you learned something, so you gotta like the video. I know you didn't know all of those stats right there. And as always, man, I really appreciate all of the support, man, big time. Shouts out to everybody that donates to the channel. Big shouts out to everybody that's a sponsor to the channel, especially my Pro Bowl sponsors, who name you see scrolling on the screen right now. A special shouts out to my one All Pro sponsor, Jaden. I really appreciate all y'all, man. I'll catch y'all later. I'm out.